It's summertime, the weather is nice, and you've decided that now is the perfect time to learn how to master your charcoal barbecue grill. I'm here to tell you that it's a lot easier than you think, as long as you avoid making these five mistakes that beginners often make when learning how to barbecue with charcoal. The first thing that you need to do when barbecuing with charcoal is you have to get your coals lit. Avoid the temptation of using lighter fluid to get your coals going. Lighter fluid will leave an awful aftertaste that will dominate the flavor of your food. You want to be able to taste whatever it is that you're cooking, not that awful fluid. So leave that lighter fluid on the store shelf. Instead of using lighter fluid, get yourself a chimney, fill it up with the coals, light the fire underneath the chimney, and give it time to get nice and hot. Usually about 20 to 25 minutes will do the trick. I've got two size chimneys. You can pick these up at pretty much any hardware store that sells barbecue accessories. I find that the smaller one is sufficient for most purposes. And that leads to the second mistake that beginners often make, whether you're using a chimney or not. The mistake is not letting your coals to get hot enough. Be patient, give it that 20 to 25 minutes, wait until those coals start to ash over before you dump them into your grill. It will go a long way in terms of being able to keep your grill hot enough throughout your cook. I like to use these Weber lighter cubes when I'm lighting up my chimney. You can use tumbleweed or you can take newspaper, crumple it up, put it at the put it on the bottom of your chimney so lots of ways to get it started the third mistake is not cooking with zones and basically all that means is underneath your grill grate where you put your coals what you want to do is you want to establish a hot zone and a cool zone Here's an example of two zones where I have coals in my baskets over here on the left side. And if I wanted to do direct grilling, I could have the meat right over the coals. And then you have a cool side over on the right side. You know, there's more than one way to do this. You could even set up kind of like a three zone type setup where you have coals here the middle will be like not quite as hot so it could be kind of like a medium zone cool zone farther off to the right you know you could have coals on both the far left and right side and then you put your meat over the center and you could have that type of a setup so lots of ways to do this even if you don't have charcoal baskets you just you know have your coal set up and bank them to one side or the other of the grill advantages of having the hot zone it will allow you to get a good sear on your meat couple that with a cool zone in case you have flare-ups if you have flare-ups you can move your meat over to the cool zone very important to have both a hot and cool zone that's a big one the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your grill is able to come up to temperature before you put your food on. So make sure you put the lid back on, open the vents. So if you're using a kettle, that's going to be at the bottom of your grill. You want to slide that lever open, get, it, get those vents open so that oxygen is coming into your grill. That's what generates the heat. On your lid, you have the exhaust vents. You want to make sure that those are open as well. And those are the ones that you're going to use to make any adjustments. If you're grilling and you want to get a really hot temperature, say over 500 degrees, leave everything wide open. And then as you start to get to your desired temperature, dial back those exhaust vents up at the top. You can make little adjustments until you get to the temperature that you want. Now it's a little bit different if you're smoking meat. 
So this is where you're cooking low and slow. So you're trying to keep your temperature between 225 and 275 degrees. So you don't necessarily need to have those intake vents open quite as wide as you do when you're grilling at high temperatures. So maybe you only have those vents open halfway or a quarter way. Basically, you're just allowing less oxygen to get inside of the grill when you're cooking at low and slow temperatures. And then same thing, you're just going to make micro adjustments up at the exhaust. Probably won't have the exhaust quite as wide open. But when I am smoking, I'll keep the exhaust vents open until I'm like within 25 degrees of my desired temperature and at that point I'll start to make those adjustments closing the exhaust a little bit more. When you're smoking meat you want to get your grill at the desired temperature and then you want your grill to stabilize. You want to give it some time to settle in so give it some time. Don't rush. Once your grill has stabilized then it's time to put the food on. I've let these coals ash over. It's been a little bit more than 20 minutes. And you see how they're pretty much grayed all the way over. That's what you want. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour them over my unlit coals. And then what we'll do from here is we'll let those lit coals light up the unlit coals start to bring the grill up to temperature before I want to put my food on. Here's a bonus tip when smoking meat. Resist the temptation to overload your grill or smoker with wood. I like to use wood chunks. So these are pretty good sized chunks right here. So I'm just going to put one on each side. Using too much wood with charcoal can impart a bitter taste on your food it'll overpower the meat so you don't want to do that resist that temptation the fifth mistake and really the key to good barbecue be patient don't rush the process avoid the temptation to open that lid and take a peek there's that old saying that we've all probably heard if you've been around anyone that barbecues if you're peeking, you ain't cooking. So avoid the temptation to take peeks. You want to see how your food is doing. I get that. But all that does is it just creates temperature fluctuations inside of your grill. Sometimes you open that lid, that temperature that you've worked so hard to establish, you might have a hard time getting it back. Your temperature might drop dramatically or on the other hand, it could allow too much oxygen to get inside of your grill and cause temperature spikes. So doing a lot of peaking, it just makes your whole process entirely more difficult. So avoid the temptation, let your food do its thing. If you found the information in this video to be helpful, do me a favor, hit the like button consider subscribing to the channel. If you want more information about how to barbecue, click on one of the boxes below.